Hi, I'm Danny, and welcome to my channel. For today's video, I have my January update to the Project Yarnathon. This was created by Andrea, and I do have her linked down below. For this project, we are to use up a marathon's length worth of yarn, which is 26.2 miles or 42.16 kilometers. This project has been going on for at least two years, maybe a little bit longer. I don't remember exactly when we started this, but I've been having so much fun doing this. This project is open to anybody who would like to join. Feel free to jump in at any time. You can crochet, you can knit, just any yarn type projects. So I do have a finished crochet item and then I have several knit things that I want to show you as well. So the first one that I've been working on is a project that I cast on back in January of last year. It was part of the Get Your Craft On that was suggested to us by Jaylon and I have her link down below. We cast on one project for every day of the month, so 31 projects. So this is one that I have been working on here and there over the past year, but I've really focused in on this during December through January to try to finish it up for this update. So the project that I worked on is called the Stitch Equality Shawl by Amy Gunderson, and I do have that pattern link down below. You can find it on Ravelry. So as the name of the project suggests, this is a beautiful shawl, and this is it right here. Can you see the beautiful fade of this yarn? It is absolutely stunning. I will try to insert a picture of this laid out so that you can see it all in one shot. It is a pretty large shawl and it is difficult to hold this up at an angle that I can show you the whole thing. This shawl used one cake of yarn. This is from Sheep G's. This is the Whirl. This is the yarn right here. I have another one. You start at the very center with the pink and you work all the way out to the red. This one is in the colorway called Jumpin' Jelly. Hopefully you can see that right there. So this yarn is stunning. I love the way it fades slowly from color to color. Let's see if I can hold this up a little bit so you can see how the purple fades into that blue. It starts by adding a little bit of blue and then as you go down the purple fades out and the blue takes over and then it starts to introduce some green, fades down to yellow. The way they did this fade is absolutely stunning. I love this yarn. I do have two of these cakes of yarn and I'm excited to see what else I can create with these. The lines on the top of this is applied crochet. As you can see, hopefully, every other one is black and brown. So black, brown, black, brown, black, brown, all the way to the very outside edge of it right here. For these, I use the Sheep G's Whirlette. I have two of them right here. This brown one is in the shade Chocolate. And then this black one right here is in the shade Licorice. So as you can see, there is a ton of yarn in here and I did not use very much at all to do these applied lines. So I did start in the very center of this and all I have left is this little teeny ball of red. At the very end, it was a solid red. No other colors were mixed in there. So I used a ton of yarn to make this shawl. So for this shawl, including the black and brown, I used up a total of 1,158 yards, which is 1,059 meters. This is one of my favorite projects that I have made. I absolutely love this. Now let's move over to knitting. If you watched my update at the end of December, I told you that now that I have all of the Annie's Karen Crochet Kit Clubs finished, I wanted to focus in on my knitting. My local yarn store has been working on teaching people how to knit, and every month she releases two blocks. She does one for the less confident knitter and one for the more confident knitter. And I've been trying to do both blocks every month. So far, we have done six months worth of blocks. I was very behind on mine. I had seven blocks to catch up on and I did those seven blocks from the end of December until now, but I have not shown any of them on my channel. She has given out six months worth of blocks and in a few days she will give out blocks number seven. So the yarn that I'm using for all of these blocks is the Barocco Vintage right here. It comes in these hanks 
The yarn color is beautiful. These yarns don't have names, they have numbers. It just says color 51191. So I will put the colors up on the screen as I show you the blocks. I'm working with four different colors of this Barocco or Barocco vintage yarn. So the way she started out is teaching us knits and pearls. So these first few blocks are very simple. And these blocks, when we're all done with them, we will put them all together to form a blanket. So the first one is very simple. Hopefully you can see lots of knit stitches and then some pearls right here. Just a very basic block. This one is very loose. My gauge is very loose. I was just learning how to knit continental style. I am a crocheter. That's what I've originally started doing. I always hold my yarn in my left hand and I was trying to knit by putting it in my right hand and throwing the yarn and it just wasn't working for me. So I was trying to learn how to do continental knitting. I have done other projects where I was a thrower and it's been so long, I just, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm not coordinated enough to do it. So this, you can tell that the stitches are very loose. The block is quite large, but that was my first one that I did. That was for the less confident knitter. And then for the more confident knitter, there is this one, as you can hopefully see, it does have little trees in here. There's two rows of them going down. So this one was a lot of fun. Again, just knits and pearls. She did the same thing for month two, knits and pearls. This, I'm hoping you can see, it has a lot of zigzag lines going up and down the pattern. Maybe you can see that there. So just a very subtle pattern, just using knits and pearls. And then for the more advanced or more confident knitter, she did this one and this one is beautiful. I love the pattern of this one. This was a very fun block to make. For month three, she started teaching us slip stitches. So this is the first one. For the less confident knitter, you can see that raised row of slip stitches right there. And then for the more confident knitter, again, hopefully you can see that zigzag pattern in there. That was a lot of fun to make. For month four, she did the same thing, slip stitches. This one, let's see. I have not blocked any of these, so these are pretty scrunched up. But this one, once it's blocked, it will look more like this. It has more of a honeycomb pattern to it. But now that it's unblocked, you can see it looks really textured. Once it's blocked, it won't be as textured. So that was month four. And then for the more confident knitter, this was one of my favorite ones to make. This pattern turned out beautiful. For month five and six, we started doing cables. So for the less confident knitter, this is the cabling that we did. All of the cables go in the same direction and it's a four stitch cable. This was a lot of fun to do. And for the more confident knitter, she has cables going to the left and the right. Hopefully you can see that these lean this way and those lean that way. So this was fun to learn as well. And then for month six, again, more cables. This is the less confident knitter. I think these are really pretty. I showed this to somebody, I don't remember who it was. He said that these look like little owls on here. <laughs> I can see that. Very simple yet pretty pattern here. And then for the more confident knitter, these are, are they called twists? <laughs> more cabling, but it's a little bit of a different style. So two rows of those where the cables go in front of and behind each other as you go up the pattern and up the block. I know that that is just a few stitches and with knitting, there are so many different stitches I have yet to learn, but hey, I'm starting to learn, I'm trying new things and I'm really excited by the progress I'm making and the results that I'm seeing in these blocks as I finish them. So I will continue doing these. I will be back every month to show you the blocks that I do. I'm trying to stay on top of it now and make the blocks during the month that she assigned them. I just set these aside so I could focus in on all my crocheting last year to get that all done before the end of the year. So for these 12 blocks here. I've used up about six hanks worth of yarn. Each one of these hanks will give me two squares so I'm able to choose one color for the month and get both blocks out of the same hank of yarn. So adding all of that together, all 12 of these blocks used up 1,277 yards worth of yarn or 1,168 meters. Now I just finished up 
the shawl the other night and I just finished up these blocks so I don't have anything that I am currently working on that I can show you. I can't, don't have any whips to show you or works in progress, but these are the items that I have finished recently. So let's tally up the numbers so far of what I've finished over the past month. Adding the yardage from the squares together with the yardage for the shawl, I have finished off 2,435 yards or 2,227 meters. If I divide that number by the number of yards in a mile, I have finished off 1.38 miles worth of yarn or 2.22 kilometers worth of yarn over this past month. Now, if I add that number together with the total amount of yardage I have finished up since I started this challenge, I have finished off 39,381 yards or 36,010 meters. Again, if I take that number and divide it by the number of yards in a mile, I have finished off 22.38 miles or 36.02 kilometers. Since a marathon is 26.2 miles, if I subtract the 22.38 miles, I only have 3.82 miles left or 6.15 kilometers. So I am pretty close to my goal looking at all of this. I am 85.4% of the way done with my marathon. I will of course keep going with this because I'm having so much fun knitting and crocheting I will surpass my marathon. As a matter of fact, I'm probably gonna do it in the next month to two months max. I think I'm gonna hit that goal. The reason being is that we need to do a lot of home improvement projects. I need to replace the windows in my house. And in order to do so, I need to pack up stuff, move it downstairs into my garage. However, in my garage are all of my bins of yarn. So I need to pan or you go through all of my yarn. The grand majority of the yarn that I have out there is my worsted weight yarn, my red heart super saver, things like that. So I'm going to start using that up so I can empty out some bins. I will be making blankets that I can donate. I will be making kitten blankets that are about two feet by two feet. It is almost kitten season and every spring my local cat shelter does a kitten shower where they ask for donations of blankets, formulas, bottles, money, anything that they can use to help with all the kittens that they will be getting over the next several months as cats start to have lots of babies. So I'm going to be working on those and a lot of the blankets that I make take two strands of worsted weight yarn to, and I use them together to make the stitches so they eat up yarn like crazy. So that's why I'm saying I think I will probably hit my goal in the next month or two. If I make one that is about a baby size blanket, it uses up a mile worth of yarn or more than a mile worth of yarn in just that one blanket. So the last 3.82 miles worth of yarn is not gonna be difficult for me to hit. So that is my entire update. I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, jump in on this challenge if you would love to join us. And I do have a link down below to everybody else who is joining this if you wanna go see their updates as well. That is everything that I have for you. Before you go, if you haven't, I hope that you'll please subscribe to my channel and ring that bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for stopping by. Mm -hmm.